At the end of that last tutorial, I mentioned that I would like to get the chorus sounding a little bit different from the verse, meaning that they both have a very, very similar rhythm and a very similar feel. And that's partially because they're both using the same sample loop. What if we could have a different loop for the chorus to totally change things up? Let's go ahead and drop a sample loop in there right now. I'll go over to the samples page. And currently, you can see on the slot that I have selected, we've got the loop we've been using the whole time. But if I click over to the next slot, or even any of the other ones, you'll see the default loop that's always in there. And if I want, I can go back over again and start looking through my massive list of loops and give some examples on how this can kind of work. Let's drop this one in that's missing a kick drum where it's just hi-hat and kick and hear how it sounds. It sounds like Flesh needs a nap or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and lower the threshold. So you'll notice a lot of like the high-end sounds are being activated, but there's not really a whole lot going on in the low-end. That's because there's no kick drum. And Flesh really likes having a kick drum as it supplies low frequency or bass clef modulation, or low frequency centroids. And Flesh really likes having high frequency sounds like snares and hi-hats for treble clef modulation or high frequency centroids. Meaning the more full frequency the loop is, the more melody and movement you'll get out of Flesh. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and see if I can find a loop that has a little bit of everything, kind of like this one. Try this one out. We'll lower the threshold. And let's hear the difference. Add some nice rhythm into what we're doing. Let's go ahead and tweak it a little further. I'll leave the samples page and go over here into the sample player. And now that I'm in there, let me just tell you, the presets within this section can have a very big effect on not just the loop or the sound that you've brought into Flesh, but also the way that that loop and sound modulates the rest of the other synthesizers. So you can create a great deal of texture, not just for the beats, but also for the synths in this section of Flesh. It's amazing because as you hear me tweak the loop, you can also hear that it's affecting the synthesizers in the background. One thing I really love about the spectrum knob when I'm in the sample player is that when you move it into the negative territory of the pan pot, you start to get yourself what sounds like a reversed loop effect going on, like it's going backwards. And then when you move the spectrum forward, suddenly it sounds like the loop's going forward, but it's also brighter. Really, really cool. And then when you start to toggle this with character, you get, a, uh, it's almost like you're working with a filter section and able to kind of wash out your loops and filter sweep them and do some really fun stuff with them. Now, like when you're using Recycle, I can use the length knob to kill the decay time of each of the different snippets within the loop or the different transients in the loop, making it sound more ticky and more open. All right, so we know how to add in a new sample loop into our Flesh session or Flesh preset, however you prefer to look at it. And we also know a little bit more about the sample player. In the next tutorial, I'm going to explain a little bit more about what this little mod knob does right here in front of me. We're going to drop in some more sample loops, and we're also going to start getting into how the giant macro knobs here at the bottom interplay with the rest of Flesh.